today we're going to talk about healing. We are still on the sermon series, Divine Healing. And I believe that God Almighty has something special in store for you today. I believe that God Almighty is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He was and is and is to come. And what happened in the times of the Bible, what happened in old times past, it's still happening. God Almighty is the same. He wants to move in your life. He wants to touch you. He wants to heal you. He wants to deliver you. And he's ready to do that today in Jesus' name. The Bible says that he brings good tidings to the poor, that he heals the brokenhearted. He uh, breaks open the prison doors for those who are in bondage. Praise God. And I believe that God Almighty is going to do that in our lives today in Jesus' name. He's the reason we are gathering here today. And you are the reason that He is here. Hallelujah. He is here today to meet you. And it's because you came. That's why He showed up. Because He knows that you love Him and you need Him. And He's here for you today. Whatever you need may be, He's going to meet you at the point of your need in Jesus' name. Praise God. Healing through deliverance is what we're going to talk about today. We know that there are several ways that you can receive healing, so to speak. And what we're going to talk about today seems like more often than not, some, somehow I'm involved in something that has to do with deliverance. It's, I've had some experience in it. I'm not the most experienced ever. But I have witnessed tens of thousands of deliverances throughout my life. And I have seen both... A lot of crazy and different kind of things that many people don't even think is real, but it actually is. Many of the things we see in the movies, it's real. Many of the things that happen in the world around today and things that we hear in, in stories and old fables is actually real. It's, it's the spiritual realm and it's very real. So today we're going to talk about especially how you can receive healing through deliverance. In, if you go through the chronicle um, timeline of Jesus' uh, earthly ministry in the four Gospels, there are about between 25 and 30 instances where Jesus Christ heals or resurrects one or more people. Out of those instances, about 20% of them, 15 to 20%, happens through deliverance. There is people that receive healing from epilepsy after a demon is cast out. There's people that receive healing from mental problems and mental disorders after demons are cast out. And there are people that are healed from being, being deaf and mute after demons are cast out. These are the examples that we have in the book of the, in the Gospels. And I have many more experiences of people that actually receive healing both from heart conditions, hypertension, diabetes, the most simple things, evil spirits, can be the cause of it. If we read in the Bible, we can see that there are primarily three main reasons to why you or I don't receive our healing when we pray. Three main reasons. And it's all stated in the Bible. In fact, in Matthew 9, if you want to follow me there, in the book of Matthew 9, all these three different reasons are stated after each other. And the first one is sin. Second one is your faith. And third one is evil spirits. There are other conditions where, for example, there's a woman uh, that was sick from birth. And Jesus said it's for the glory of God that she's receiving her healing today. It was not because of any of these other reasons. Nonetheless, these are the three main categories of of reasons why people do not receive the healing. Some people simply live in a life of sin. And if they receive a healing, before they even get to walk in your healing, you're already back. Because sickness is just like anything else. If you don't make a change in your life, it may come back again. Someone that has been diagnosed by a doctor with lung cancer, for example, and and the doctor says, you have to stop smoking. And they stop smoking, they go for prayer, they receive a healing, and then they go back to smoking. It's very likely, and they are prone to get that back again. It's simply because of the life that they live. We also have those that have troubles receiving because of their faith. The Bible says that when Jesus went to his hometown, it was difficult for people to receive because they didn't have faith. They didn't believe. They said, I know him. I know he sleeps in on Saturdays. How can he be a man of God? How can he be the son of God? I know that he doesn't know how to spell this. He, he doesn't like 
whatever, you know, when you know the person too, lo- too good, it's difficult for them, it was difficult for them to have faith in him because of that. Thirdly, is the topic that we're going to talk about today, which we can read about in Matthew 9, verse 32. As they went out, behold, they brought to him a man mute and demon-possessed. And when the demon was cast out, the mute spoke. And the multitudes marveled, saying, I have never seen anything like this in Israel. Praise God. Hallelujah. That means that after the evil spirit that was tormenting that man's life was cast out, he could speak. In this place, the Bible says, and, and Jesus Christ encourages us that we should use, put, use this, uh, put the word to use in our own life. Insert your name where the message is per, uh, personal. So for example, here, in this place, it's very easy for us to, to begin to say that, okay, the issue I'm having, whatever it may be, whether it's from demons or not, I'm going to get free from it. Hallelujah. And begin to proclaim the word of God over your life. It's very important not to speak on the level of your old life. Hallelujah. <clears throat> we are going to talk about the spirit of sickness here. There is a spirit of, of sickness that many times torments people and, and Christians today. And I've seen it many times that people... Many times the spirit of sickness cannot come straight with sickness into your life. It always starts first with the fear of sickness. There are people in your midst, I, many of us know them around us, and they are constantly afraid of sickness. They are afraid that, oh, Oh, this, this is not normal. I'm not sure what's going on with me right now. Oh, this is, this is what they said. They said that on, online, it said that this could be this symptom and this, it could be this. And you are constantly afraid of sickness, afraid of accidents, afraid of that. And because of that, it builds a stronghold in your mind. The fact of the matter is that the devil cannot attack you and get a grip of your life unless you let him. And by sowing a seed of fear and negative thoughts, that is how evil spirits of sickness can enter your life and actually plant the same exact sickness you're afraid of in your life. And when it happens, you know what will happen? I've seen those people many times. They'll be like, yeah, I knew it. I knew it. I knew it was coming. Yeah, you knew it was coming and here it is. Why did you know that it was coming? Why can't you know that by his stripes you are healed? Why can't you know that that sickness is not part of your body? It's important to realize that you cannot continue to have those thoughts, to harbor those thoughts in your life. The Bible says in the book of Job that Job was a a holy man and, and God was bragging of him and saying that this man will never betray me. And then the devil said, well, let me attack him with some sickness and other things and see if he will not turn from you. Now listen to this very, is a very important thing that is going on right here. When it comes to sickness that was caused by evil spirits, that type of sickness, the purpose of it is not for you to be sick. The purpose of it is for you to turn away from God. That's the reason why spirits attack you with sickness. So that you will say, why me? God, I've served you all my life. Why is this happening to me? No, God, I'm telling you now, if you don't heal me, I'm going to look for another God. Hallelujah. You know, someone that was tempted with that exact situation, it was the three men in the book of Daniel 3. They were tempted to follow the system around them and to kneel to something else and say, yeah, 
I knew it was coming. I knew. I knew that this sickness would come sooner. My mom has it. My grandmom has it. My grandpa has it. From the beginning, I knew. And now I lay my life before you. But in the book of Daniel 3, I want to read it actually for you. It's, it's such a powerful passage. The book of Daniel 3, if you can go there with me. See, you will probably find it before me. The book of Daniel 3. And I'm going to read from Daniel 3, verse 16. These were the three men that were together with, with Daniel, you know, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And the king had told him that you must kneel to this other god. You must accept the thoughts of sickness in your life. You must give in to the symptoms you're feeling in your body. You must or else something worse will happen to you. And they answered to him and said, King Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. If this is the case, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace and he will deliver us from your hand O king and this next verse <laughs> this next verse is the one that gets me i can i love this verse and it says but if not let it be known to you O king that we do not serve your gods nor will we worship the gold image which you have set up. This simply means whether God heals me or not, he is my healer. Whether he delivers me or not, he is my deliverer. Whether he takes me out of this situation or not, I will never turn away from my God he can and he will hallelujah 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 so when you are wondering is this sickness caused by evil spirits or not and you come to a man of God and you ask I'm wondering is this sickness from evil spirits or is this from my lack of faith or is this from you know what you don't have to know where it came from. All you need to know, it does not belong. When a thief enters your house and steals things, who would ask the thief, excuse me, where did you come from before you entered my house? No, you say, you thief, get out of my house. That is sickness to you and I. We don't need to know where it came from, whether it was cost of this or that or this or that. All we need to know is that when we go for a test, we will know. Hallelujah. I'm going to uh, take a few questions that many people have asked me. And I'm just going to go through them briefly here because we're going to have a wonderful time of prayer here in, in a minute. We know that many of us have come here today. Some of us have physical issues that we need healing from. Some of us have emotional issues that we need healing from. Some of us have mental issues that we need healing from. Strongholds in our minds and different kind of thoughts, thought patterns that have become part of our life that we can't break by ourselves. Those kind of things, they're going to break today. It's the beginning of something. And we don't, the devil knows that the earlier that he can kill your faith, when it's in its most weakest form, the easier it is. So we too know, <laughs> the earlier you can catch that spirit of sickness out of your life, the easier it's going to go away. The longer it's been there, the more you're going to be like, oh, but this is part of me. How, how is it going to work? It's been like this for 20 years. But if it's just coming to its... That's what we are here for. We're here to just quench that before it gets any power in your life. Hallelujah few questions that people have asked me over time they they used to ask how would you know I'm wondering how can I know that I'm demon possessed how do I know if someone has a demon and and I like to say that it, especially like in a family unit many times I've seen 
people coming and and a family member is having a terminal disease and they say that it's demonic they need deliverance and we would pray for the person and nothing would happen and then we would pray for the person that brought them and then an evil spirit would manifest and say i caused that sickness and then people would say oh so you're the wicked one in this relationship but it's not about that you know a family is a unit the bible says that the two shall become one that means that when the devil attacks your family either with sickness or with disunity strife or fighting and arguments it's not one person it's not about who is it that is possessed the demons and the evil spirits are attacking the family as a unit sometimes evil spirits is not even in any one of them but they can jump and influence whoever they have power over at that moment because the moment that you as a christian yield very strongly to emotions too too strong emotions in any way i'm talking about when it's the most highest emotion we we talk about when you get very angry or when you get completely devastated you open yourself up subconsciously your spirit opens up and it's saying whatever is here i don't know who but i need comfort in any way and many times that is when demons will attack a family unit and they can jump from one to the other so if a family is having a problem or someone is sick in a family and they say they need deliverance and it's this one is demon possessed so this one is the worst one we look at them and we say you know what you guys you are one a chain is only as strong as its weakest link. So don't think that this one or this one, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who it's from. Hallelujah. All we know is that when the thief comes in, they have to come out. Praise God. And another thing that I want to quickly share with you as well is that many times an evil spirit of sickness can actually be in a particular part of your body literally a demon can occupy a leg it can op- occupy a hand it can occupy your eyes it can occupy your mouth that's why when we pray for people many times we lay hands on those places and i've seen it myself someone who has come and they are manifesting but they are resisting the power of god and then you ask them you say where is your power and they say i have powers in my eyes or in my tongue or wherever that's where their headquarters is in your body and many times when it comes to sickness sickness that spirit can sit in your back it's not only that oh the demon possesses our heart it's some kind of vague invisible thing it actually sits in a part in your body you can have pain in your back and it's literally a demon that is attacking your back constantly you can have pain in your eyes in your head in your shoulders that's the place they are striking you we need to understand that the spiritual is not as overly supernaturally that we cannot understand it the spiritual is just like here but invisible the demon cannot just be floating around everywhere he sits somewhere in your body when you're having pain here that's because the demon is right there we need to pray for that demon to come out so that your back pain can go away hallelujah praise the lord i'm gonna share one one more experience that i've had and then we're gonna go into a time of prayer we have some really loaded prayers for you today we believe that a lot of things are gonna come crumbling down today in the name of jesus as you are sitting down right now even begin to just prepare your heart for what god has in store for you this place this place is an embassy of heaven (laughs) if you come here and you have any kind of darkness in your backpack you're gonna go through x-ray trust me we don't allow any foreign objects in this place hallelujah no foreign objects people used to ask me and say like how can you tell if someone is this someone is like under the move of the holy spirit how can you know if this person right now is it the holy spirit that is moving is it demon that is moving or what is it that is moving 
And, and it's one of the questions that a lot of people want to know. And they're like, why? It looks, but I don't know. How can you know? That's the thing. You don't need to know. You don't need to know. When someone comes to a doctor and says, I feel like I'm having some pain, the doctor won't look at you and say, yeah. Yeah, I would say that that's probably your liver that is causing trouble, or maybe your kidney. They run tests, and that test will confirm what problem you have. So also, you run tests to screen your spiritual life. Let your spirit go through an x-ray to see, is there anything there in my body right now, or in my spirit that is a little bit wrong? And that x-ray is very simple. It's not about any man that is standing here. That x-ray is that when you come to God and you say, God, I need a touch from you. And someone lays a hand on you upon the authority of the name Jesus Christ. That works as an x-ray on you. So if you are wondering, oh, is this sickness caused by this or that? Well, come for prayer and you'll find out. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. And don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. One of the things that I hear more than anything else is people that say that, oh, I don't want to go up there and, you know, what if something happens and I start manifesting or something? But don't you understand that it's a good thing? Get, get it out. Who wants to have a full backpack full of stuff? And you say, well, I don't want to put it off my back because in case there's ugly stuff in there. Who cares? Nobody in this place is going to uh, ask or tell you that, oh, you're so dirty. If not for Jesus, every single one of us is dirty. No one, no one, no one is worthy of his presence if not for his grace. That is why when we come in here into his presence and you receive prayer, whatever happens, put it aside you. Nobody cares. All we care about is those who could not see before, they can now see. Those who were formerly in bondage, now they are free. Those who were formerly sick, now they are walking. That is the God that we serve and that is what we are here for today. Hallelujah. I want you to rise up to your feet right now. Time has come for us to pray. So we're going to invite the worship team in right now. We're just going to spend a few minutes in His presence and just welcome the Holy Spirit and prepare your heart. Prepare your heart for what God has in store for you today. There is something here that is about to happen. Some of us come here and you feel just tired. Some of us are feeling anxious. You have anxiety attacks, feeling depressed and fatigue. Whatever it may be, we don't care where it came from. All we know is that you're going to go live here a different person. So right now as we begin to worship, just prepare your heart and begin to pray in your heart to God. Whatever you have in store for me today, Lord, meet me at the point of my need. I don't really care how it came to pass. All I want to know is that I'm going to walk out of here a different person. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 